G'day, my name's Jonathan and I'm from Dawson Heating and Cooling. Today, I'm gonna to give you a quick rundown on the difference between evaporative cooling and reverse cycle air conditioning. Let's start with evaporative cooling. Also known as an evap, a swampy, or a swamp box, they operate by supplying a high volume of air through your home and they operate best in hot, dry, low humidity, and non-coastal climates. How evaporative cooling works is similar to that of the ocean breeze, or just like the cooling effect at the base of a waterfall. Evaporative cooling can provide approximately 10 degrees temperature reduction of the air entering your home, although this will vary significantly based on the level of humidity outside and the efficiency of the evaporative cooler. On hot, dry days, when you can get as high as 12 or 15 degrees, or on humid days, it can be as low as five degrees temperature reduction into your home. Typically, your evap cooler will sit up on your roof, and it looks just like these two coolers behind me. The cooler draws the hot outside air over the wet pads, causing evaporation of the water into the air. This results in a temperature reduction as the cool, humidified air is then distributed through ductwork and into your home. The air then enters each room via ceiling outlets and at the same time pushes all the hot air out through your external doors and windows. You need to ensure that these doors and windows remain partially open and preferably locked at all times during operation. With traditional style evaporative coolers, 100% of the airflow is brought in from outside, where it is partially filtered as it goes through the wet pads. The downside is that smoke or fine particles can make their way into the home, but on a positive note, if the air is good quality, you are breathing cool, fresh, clean air in your home. Now, let's go and have a look and see how a reverse cycle air conditioners work. Reverse cycle systems have three major components. An outdoor unit, which is called the condenser, an indoor unit, which is called the evaporator, and a thermostat, or a controller, which contains the thermostat to measure the temperature in the room. How the system works is the compressor in the outdoor unit pumps refrigerant to the indoor coil, and either warms that coil up in winter or cools it down in summer. As the fan draws air through the return air grill, it is filtered, it is then sucked into the unit through the coil, it then distributes the air through ductwork and through the outlets in your home. As it gets the temperature within the space, the system will ramp the compressor up and down to make sure it maintains a consistent temperature in your house, no matter what the ambient conditions are outside. The one major factor that differentiates the reverse cycle system for the evaporative cooling is that the reverse cycle needs you to close your external doors and windows. We need to keep that ambient air outside because the reverse cycle system utilizes the same air and recirculates it throughout your home to continually maintain conditions in the space. Okay, so there's three big takeaways that I want you guys to take away from today. Number one, evaporative cooling, you must open external doors and windows, whereas reverse cycle system, you must keep your external doors and windows closed. Number two, evaporative cooling runs on water and can only cool, whereas refrigerant, reverse cycle air conditioning runs on refrigerant, but it can heat and cool your home. Number three, the evaporative cooling system will be cheaper to run, although it, does, it is going to struggle on extremely humid days. Whereas the reverse cycle system, yes, it will cost more to run, but it will be able to maintain conditions in your home no matter how hot the ambient conditions are outside. So I hope you've learned something for today. Thanks for watching and have a great day.